Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to Hanover Messe Group Exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at Hanover Messe 2014. For those in your booth or those in the audience, please come and join us in the audience for a tea or coffee on us, that includes you, um, and listen to our upcoming presentation, uh, Fuel Reforming and Fuel Processing Systems in Sabatier Methanation Reactors. Please welcome from Precision Combustion Inc. Director of Marketing and Business Development, Anthony Anderson. Thank you very much. Thank Good you. Good morning. So as you're based in the United States, and some of the international audience here may not be aware of the company, could you please provide a bit of a, a history and an overview and just uh, yeah. overview of the services and products that you guys offer? Sure, absolutely, Roxanne. Um, we're a, a small, privately owned company in North Haven, Connecticut, the USA. Connecticut is a state between uh, New York and Boston, for those who haven't been to America or don't know about it. Uh, the geography. We are a, um, a company developing catalytic reactors and systems uh, for the energy sector essentially. We have two platform technologies and one is a microlith technology to the catalyzed mesh and the other uh, technology is RCL, catalytic combustor technology which is catalyzed tube technology. Uh, the, the mesh technology is uh, most appropriate to this uh, form and would be of most interest and so Areas of uh, development of, of, of technologies or products that we're focused on is fuel reforming and fuel processing. And something new to talk about uh, this year is uh, Sabatier methanation reactors uh, uh, technologies. So maybe we could start with the uh, fuel reformers in terms of sure. how your technology works and what sort of market applications you're looking at right now in terms of your technology. Absolutely. Uh, the fuel reforming technology is uh, utilizing the microlith mesh to be able to reform various hydrocarbon fuels we've reformed everything from gaseous fuels like natural gas and propane through liquid fuels uh, like uh, uh, ultra low sulfur diesel like which you get your gas station uh, to high sulfur diesel fuels that uh, are JP8 fuels that the military might use as well as uh, uh, some efforts recently uh, reforming biofuels and synthetic diesel fuels made from uh, uh, bio so it's so more of a renewables uh, slant uh, for, for particular technologies. Uh, most of what we've been doing is, is uh, in the reforming area is developing uh, technologies for, for military applications. So a lot of those high sulfur liquid fuels is something that we have a very uh, unique expertise in. And it's enabling technology to be able to use solid oxide fuel cells and even high temperature PEM fuel cells utilizing uh, those types of liquid fuels. And are these fuel reformers currently uh, being sold right now, or are they commercialized? They're uh, presently in a pre-commercial state, so what we do is we collaborate uh, with our various partners and stack suppliers and system integrators to evaluate the appropriateness of our technology for the applications that they care about. And so what we do is provide reformers uh, on a basis, either lease or a sale, depending upon the situation, for uh, those collaborations and evaluations to occur. So it gives them an opportunity to kind of test out your, your product yes. and provide feedback back to you guys on how, how it's working. Absolutely, and it's also educational for our customers as well because it's a, it's a unique technology and, and you, you use it in, in a different way than you might use some commodity technologies out there that it can also do reforming, uh, although most likely not as uh, well as, as we can and within a package that's smaller and lighter in weight. Uh, the, the microlith mesh itself uh, has uh, features which allow it to be made in a smaller package and lighter in weight than uh, other technologies that are available. And kind of an advantage to them too because they can actually produce it on site and have it ready for... Exactly, and, and so you can have a uh, uh, reformate gas there. And then uh, also the fuel processing uh, technologies that we're developing well as well, which is taking the fuel reformers and then adding on desulfurization technology, which we have to remove sulfur from the reformate stream in the gaseous phase, which is uh, a, a simpler thing to do than other approaches where you have to take it out before you even reform it. We also have uh, water gas shift technologies as well, uh, which uh, uh, increase the hydrogen content and reduce the carbon monoxide content and reformate. We have preferential oxidation of CO or selective oxidation of CO, as some people call it. Uh, those type of reactors we can integrate as well. Uh, those technologies reduce the CO, uh, carbon monoxide concentration and reformate. And we can provide those on test carts, uh, again, for collaboration with our partners and, and especially stack suppliers who may be interested in how their stacks operate on reformed fuels as opposed to blending gases. Uh, blending gases is a good first approach to help them characterize their, their um, uh, stack performance. And then we, if they t intend to go forward toward 
uh, fuels that are available commercially, then they need to understand how, how those fuels would affect their stack and how a reformate made from those fuels would affect their stacks. Are you currently working with anyone on any projects in terms of these fuel processing? Yes, yes, yes. We're actually doing some work today. Um, uh, we're doing, we have a biofuel reforming contract that we're working on with the United States Navy. We have an unmanned area vehicle contract uh, taking our high sulfur fuel processor version and integrating that with a solid oxide fuel cell for a small uh, uh, unmanned area vehicle program. We have uh, some special uh, uh, uses of our technologies uh, that we're developing as well. Me most of what we do is actually under confidentiality, so um, we can't, can't disclose who that is, but for, re for another example is we recently finished a phase one contract for fuel reforming for a uh, unmanned underwater vehicle program as well. So we're in involved in a lot of different areas. And, you know, there is a huge significance and emphasis on this energy security, especially in the U.S. in terms of the military. How, how do you think these units of yours, that the fuel processing, can really address, address that issue? I, I think it, it helps out, and, and I described the Navy's interest in biofuel reforming, and they're starting to try to use uh, those type of renewable fuels or blends of traditional fossil fuels and biofuels together to reduce uh, the import of, of foreign uh, petroleum products uh, and the like. Um, and so it, it's a way of being able to handle both. It's, they most likely won't use 100% biofuel. It's going to be a blend with military fuels as well. So it has to be able to handle both. So the fuel processing right now is in pre-commercialization, but you're looking for partners and looking to really bring them to the, to the market. Yeah, I mean, to, to, re, to really realize the value, you have to be working with either system integration companies or with the stack companies, uh, or both, uh, to be able to, to uh, enable these applications to come to fruition. Most of the applications that we work on are, are more mobile applications, so it's uh, vehicles like aircraft, uh, sea vehicles, ground vehicles and the like. Uh, and there's commercial analogs to all the military uh, applications I've already talked about. So there's you know, applications in, in small generators, there's applications in recreational vehicle power, applications in, in various uh, marine power as well. In terms of the Sabatier methanation reactor, can you just go into a high level overview of how, what that is and how it works and where this technology was derived from. Yeah, sure. The, um, the Sabatier uh, technology actually um, is, uh, um, uh, developed from a Nobel Prize chemist, uh, Paul Sabatier, in the early 1900s is a reaction where you take carbon dioxide and hydrogen and you make methane and you also get water from that. And NASA uses it today, actually, on the International Space Station. Uh, it helps them close their life support loops. Otherwise, they'd have to dump excess hydrogen and dump excess carbon dioxide overboard, where they, they can use this system to actually tie that together and make water, which they readily need on the space station. So they use that today. We were funded uh, for also uh, developing our technology for the next generation Savadier reactor for if there was ever Mars missions and the like to produce water but also be able to produce methane uh, oh. fuel because uh, they want to use methane to actually bring the rockets back uh, for anything they send up there when they use this type of process. So it's an old type of technology that really, has a lot of modern applications, especially in terms of uh, space exploration. Uh, what other applications in terms of the uh, energy sector could these be applied to? on Earth. <laughs> right, right. And so um, it, it's interesting because the, the whole power to gas scheme uh, has, be, has really come to fruition, especially here in Germany over the last couple of years. And this technology is something that we're looking at. It's at the laboratory scale now, so it's even um, uh, more pre-commercial than the refu fuel reforming or fuel processing technologies. But we're looking to, to investigate and collaborate uh, with partners, most likely here in Germany, to see um, what value that brings uh, into the whole power to gas scheme, where we could have one, one component component uh, that goes within that. Obviously today at the lab scale it's much, much too small and would need to be scaled up many, many times to be at the, uh, the flow rates that are of interest uh, for the power to gas um, approach. So what do you think your timeline is in terms of commercialization for these three different uh, offerings? When do you think they'll, they'll be ready for the market? I think, well, I think the fuel reforming and fuel processing is something that we could certainly do within the next year or two because they're, they're very, very close. And we have lots of multi-thousand hour runs on the technology, so we have a fairly well characterized. We're starting to understand uh, the, um, how it affects solid oxide fuel cell stacks, for example. We have a work that we're doing with high temperature PEM as well, a uh, fuel processor that we're developing uh, here this year. And so something probably over the next year or two, uh, the Sabatier reactor, because it has to be scaled up and field tested, is probably the next uh, two or three years is something that we would uh, uh, expect, expect that to be commercialized. Is there anything else you're working on right now in terms of new, new products that you're hoping to bring to, to the market as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We, we have uh, two technologies that are actually going into field test 
um, that interestingly enough aren't, uh, aren't hydrogen or fuel cell related, but they're more uh, uh, generator based. We have a, uh, a contract to develop a new generator for the U.S. Army. And then we have another uh, technology for uh, a steam generation technology that we're using for another approach. Uh, we have a, a, a broad variety of, of areas that we're focused on. Uh, probably about two-thirds of our business is, uh, is currently in the fuel reforming and processing areas, and so that's why we're here, because this is a, a, a significant and important market for us. So you have lots of opportunities within this market and lots of different services to offer. So in, yes. you know, one or two sentences, where, where do you think the company is going to be in a couple of years and what's your overall vision um, in terms of, you know, new international markets? Obviously, you're looking into Europe as one of them. Can you give me a little, you know, what the future looks like for you guys? Yeah, I think um, we'll be making uh, um, small volumes of, of uh, a couple different products uh, that I mentioned that are going into field tests and it will be something in, you know, hundreds or hundreds of units or th small thousands of units per year. So we'll be starting to have a, ma a manufacturing component to some of the things that we're doing or we'll have to partner or collaborate, form a joint venture, something along those lines. Uh, I would see us most likely also starting to have uh, fuel cell system uh, products that uh, will be brought uh, to market through partners or through the system integrators of some sort, whether it's for the military and on that side or whether it's commercial on, on, on the commercial applications. Um, I can also see that um, um, a path into, into Europe, and it would be through Germany, I think, is because of all the activity going on, uh, either through uh, now or the, even uh, more broadly the fuel cell joint undertaking, finding a way to work uh, within that. Uh, today we actually uh, import and use um, uh, components for our, uh, for our fuel reformers and processors that come from Germany, components and materials. So I think taking advantage and credit for that and being able to work with, uh, with uh, German uh, uh, research institutes or, or with the uh, various uh, system integrators or companies here in Germany would think would be a benefit. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to open this up to the audience. Does anyone have any questions regarding precision combustion zinc? Okay, well, they are looking for partners for some of these projects, as you've heard today, um, and there are some technology units that are available for testing if you guys are interested in using them with your fuel cell stacks. I strongly urge you to go check out the booth D76-1. It's just over in the corner with the Connecticut yes. Pavilion. Um, thank you so much for being thank here you, today, Roxanne. and I hope that more people come and check you guys out. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, take care. Thank you. You're welcome.